can think about those moments. Yeah. The place where you wept. The place where you wept and you cried. Yeah. That you couldn't do it. That you fell. You fell short. You fell into sin. Mm -hmm. These places. The Bible teaches that when your strength is in God, you can turn such a place into a spring and the autumn's rains will cover it. Talia 
adults and babies alike dream for around two hours per night. Even those of us who claim not to dream, because we all dream. Re researchers have found that people usually have several dreams each night, and each one typically lasts for about five to 20 minutes. Wow. And this helps wow. us to understand that there is no age restrictions to dream. You cannot say, oh man, I'm too, I'm too old to dream. I've been doing this for too many years. I can't dream anymore. You cannot use that excuse. There might not be any age restrictions, but I put before you that there are faith restrictions. There are faith restrictions to the limit we dream. We understand that, again, it's, it's not about how old you are, because in Genesis chapter 12, it teaches that Abraham was 75 years old when he went on his first mission team. We understand that Caleb was 85 years old when he was asked to take the mountain. Luke Joshua chapter 14. So you can never say I'm too old to dream. Do you have any campus in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Go. We understand there's a, there's a new notion going on in the kingdom that I'm too young to be great. But again, Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 was also a dreamer. You look at the arguments between the apostles in the New Testament. We find them arguing about who the greatest is. Right before Jesus was about to die, they weren't asking, okay, God, what can I do for you? They're like, man, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the greatest? And I think about it. That was the only argument recorded about our apostles. They weren't arguing about, oh, who's going who's gonna to pay rent this month? Or who's, who's going to, who ate my chicken? Or, or the, the last thing? Or who used my makeup if you're in the sister's household? They weren't arguing about these things. Their argument was next level. They were arguing about who the greatest was meant to be. And the cool thing is, is that Jesus never scorned them for that. But he, he readjusts them. He helps them to have the right focus, understanding. It's not about your selfish ambition, but he purifies, his, he purifies the ambition. And it makes it godly. So again, it's okay to be great. I want to I wanna help us to, 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 to remove the lid that we've set on ourselves in the North region. Where we feel like we have to be mediocre. Gone are the days. Gone are the days that we're going to leave that behind this very hour. We're not going to be a mediocre region. No more mediocre song meetings. No more mediocre whatever. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to take things to the next level, amen? You know, going into 2024, I have some desires and I have some dreams for the region that I believe God has put on my heart. Number one, my wife and I are going to be appointed. We're, we're striving to be appointed as an evangelist and women's ministry. The dream is for the North region to reach 100 disciples by the end of the year. The dream is also for us to have 10 restorations by the end of the year. I'm going to get a little bit like that. Yeah. 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 And, and that in itself, it kind of reveals our heart. Yes. Yeah. You know, we don't, we got amen for the, for the baptisms, yeah. but what about the restoration? Yeah. 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 I believe we have one notion to be army, but we miss out on the family. Yeah. But we, don't, we understand that this isn't Jesus' heart. He was straight radical, but he also cared for his mom on the cross. Yes. Yeah. So in the same way as we are going out, making disciples right. and striving to do our best in the streets, we also got to keep our brothers and sisters yeah. in our hearts and be praying yeah. for them. Yeah. 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 The dream to have a higher retention rate. Yeah. You know, okay. what does that mean? It's, again to, it's, it's what I just oh, said just a minute ago. It's to have, it's to have uh, uh, less, less of followers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're always we're gonna have followers, yes, but but again it's to reduce that. There are some things that are in our control. Yeah. Loving and taking care of one yes. another is in yeah. our control. Yes. Yes. Number yes. five. You guys are gonna love this one. Come on, wow. To have free dating couples in the morning. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 I gotta be praying for Tyler right there. We gotta get her dating. Yeah. We gotta get her dating. <laughs> Free engagement in the new in the North Region. Yeah. One marriage, one marriage in the North Region. And the dream is to start eight new Bible talks in the North Region. Two new, two new households in the in the North Region. And I want to put out an operation. This operation is called Operation Facelift. 
What is face yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a surgery done, but we're not going to be going into cosmetics and stuff like that. But Operation Facelift, we're going to change the way that the region is viewed. We gotta go from being an all black region to being all nations. Yeah. Yeah. This is the operation face this. So we get 20 new 20 new Europeans that are baptized and sold out the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Woo. And lastly, last but not least, for the worship of the North region, we get that. Amen. Yeah. Come on. That's amazing, bro. For each and every yeah. single one of our worship yeah. to be attractive. Yeah. That's right. For it to be attractive. The title of today's charge, mm. entering into 2024, is living the dream. Amen. Living the dream. Yeah. Not living your dream. Amen. Not living the church's dream. Not living your leader's dream. Not living my dream, but living the dream. Do you want to live for Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you want to live for Jesus Christ? Yes. So my aim is to convince you tonight to buy into God's dream. So you ask, what is that? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says, I urge you. Yes. The Greek word is to call and to draw near. I urge you then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all, in all godliness yes. Yes. and holiness. This is good and pleases mm. God, our Savior, who wants some men to be saved. No, it says all men yeah. to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. The Bible says the first thing you got to think about, the, the Greek word for first is yeah. first in rank. Where does prayer rank in your spirituality? It lists four different types of prayers. Number one, it says request. This simply means to ask God. Number two, it says prayer. And we might think that, okay, it's just to, it's just to open, up, open our mouths and just to say stuff. No, but, but it literally means to pray in a certain place. You know, most Jews would, would go to the, to the streams where the river was at because they would like to wash their hands and purify themselves before they enter, enter, oh, wow. enter, God's, throne, enter yeah. God's throne room. Because they understand that this is a reverent kind of moment. Mm. The question is, is your prayers, are your prayers reverent? Mm. Or do you just go out and you blur out words? And you, you, you share stuff, and, and then you're like, okay, I feel like I, I, I'm done, I'm done getting, to getting the stuff out of my heart. And then that's it. No, but prayer is to be reverent. You are to praise God. You are to understand how holy he is. You are to, to understand how holy he is. And then the next one really is intercession. Intercession, like I said in the dream, in, the, in, in part of the goals, really is, to, is, is, is one is to get ten restoration. And we've got to be able to be praying for individuals that's falling away. Yeah, amen. amen. Individuals that's falling away. How many people, how many of the, the fallaways have we been praying for this year? And lastly, thanksgiving. We've got to have gratitude involved in our prayers. That's why Paul says, I urge you that first of all, this needs to be what we're known for, our prayer life. It says later on that this is good and pleases God. The Greek word for good is kalos which means to be beautiful, to be excellent, and to be handsome. Then we say, your prayer life shows how handsome you are. Yeah. Your lack of prayer life on the other hand can actually, can actually be seen. Your lack of prayer life can be, can be seen. You might, you might feel like, okay, it's about your parents. No, 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 your, your prayer life is what transforms you. Come on, bro. And then it says, it pleases. God is pleased with it. The Greek word is to be accepted. The same word used in Genesis chapter 4 when God says that if you do not do what is right, yes, you will you not be accepted? Yeah. In Hebrew, that word accepted means respect. Wow. When, we do, when we have incredible prayer lives, God respects it. Yeah. When we don't, on the other hand, not only are we disrespecting him, but he, he doesn't respect it. Mm. He just looks away. Yeah. And he says, why are you so angry? Yeah. I want us to go from, from being the, 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 the angry kind of like the depressed, sad, stressed out region to be in a region really that lives a fulfilled life. Yeah. To be in a region that goes above and beyond what is expected. But again, it says, this is good and pleases God our Savior. He wants all men to be saved. It says he wants all men to be saved. The Greek word for once is to have in mind. It's to dream. God's dream is for all men. 
This word for all men, all nations. Did you see? The question is, is God's dream your dream? Is all nations in your heart? Is it on your heart? Yes. But again, we understand this by our actions. Jeremiah 17, it helps us to understand that it's not about what we say with our mouth, but it's about what our actions say. Yeah. If you look at time trip, I spent, you might be asking, what did you spend your Christmas doing? I ate, hey man, I, do, I, I did some eating. <laughs> More eating. <laughs> it was good. I had a great Christmas. But I also done, done some reflection. I went through timelines from the year 2023. And to look at the individuals we study in the Bible, and to understand that the majority were from one nation. But again, we understand that bad, okay. It's okay to say, yes, I want all nations. But what does your action really say? So we understand that we need to be able to pray all these different things. But we, 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 we see that what pleases God really is our prayer life. But his desire, his dream, is for all men to be saved. Galatians chapter 3. Come on, oh, man. Man. Galatians chapter 3 in verse 7. In Galatians 3 in verse 7, the Bible says, Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham, the scriptures foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. And announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The Bible teaches that the scriptures foresaw. Again, to dream. The Bible teaches that he foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. And announced. Other translation says God preached the gospels to Abraham. He preached the gospel to Abraham. When you have a dream. When you are captivated by a dream, you have nothing but to preach the word of God. When you have the vision, you've got nothing else. You don't need your disciple to force you out of the street. You don't need someone to say you're going to share with all nations, but you have it on your heart and you see that you see the need to share it and to, to preach the word. The Bible says that he, he announced it. He announced the gospel that God, to, to, to Abraham of all nations will be blessed through him. Again, all nations meaning all ethnos. Again, we find this in Matthew chapter 28. All nations is God's dream. The question is, is God's dream your dream? Yes. What is your vision in 2023? Come on, now. Let's have a look at Psalms 84. Come on, Dave. What is your vision in 2024? Psalms 84, one of my favorite scriptures. It says this in verse 1. It says in verse 1, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Does that describe you? Does your soul yearn? Can you feel a disturbance in your spirit? When you're away from me, I can't, I can't spend a week without hearing some singing. That's right. I can't yeah. spend a week without hearing some preaching. I was already, I was already going from the welcome. You know, I, I, need, I can't spend a week. I yearn for it. Does that describe your soul? Yeah. It faints for it. It says in verse 3, even the sparrow has found a home. Yes. And the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young. A place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my, my, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Amen. You are ever green. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Whose heart, whose strength is in you. Who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The autumn rains also cover its pools. They go from strength to strength. So each appears before God in time. The Bible is so clear. Yeah. It teaches that these individuals, they were going into the desert, but their hearts were set on pilgrimage. Yeah. Their heart was set on pilgrimage. They were set on worship. This was what their, their souls were yearning for. Though they may be in the desert, they weren't yearning or thirsting for water. They were thirsting for God. Though they may be in the desert, and, and, and again it says they were, they were in the valley of Baca. Baca means a place of, of weeping. 
a place of wheat in a dry place. There was nothing going on. But the Bible teaches that blessed are those whose strength are in you. There are a lot of visions and a lot of goals, and we're going to go over them later on today. We're going to go over our dreams to, to figure out what, what do we have in mind for 2024. Yes. But at the same time, I, I believe that the, the constant mistake that we make year in and year out is to put strength in ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. To put strength in, in, in our own abilities to, yeah. to get whatever it is we want to get done. Yeah, bro. To put strength in ourselves. But the Bible teaches that blessed are those whose strength are in you. Come on. Who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Daca, they make it a place of springs. Yeah. Think about it. A place that's deserted. Yeah. A place that's known for bitterness. Yeah. A place that's known for weeping. And I believe there are these places we've been through this year. Yeah. 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 You can think about those moments. Yeah. The place where you wept. The place where you wept and you cried. Yeah. That you couldn't do it. That you fell. You fell short. You fell into sin. These places. The Bible teaches that when your strength is in God, you can turn such a place into a spring and the autumn's rains will cover it. You can go from being from going from a place of weakness to a place of strength. Come on, bro. All you need to do is put your strength in God. Come on. All you need to do is put your strength in God. Yeah. You say, man, I wasn't fruitful last year. I tried my best. But again, it was your strength in him. Right. I believe we had a lot, and it, it baffles me. It baffles me. We had a lot of Bible studies this year. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Bible studies. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. But I, I kind of reflect. I'm like, man, how come, why wasn't we fruitful? Mm. Because our strength was in us. Our strength has been in ourselves. Again, we share, but we don't we don't pray as much. We follow up, but we don't pray as much. When we, 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 we look at the stats and it says, oh yeah, I hit 50 today and 55, which is incredible. Again, discipleship is a dichotomy. Does it mean you have to stop doing doing sharing your faith? No, you've got to do that, but you've got to have the right heart. Preach. You've got to have the right heart in doing it. Preach. Oftentimes we fall into the extreme. It's like, okay, the man just said that we shouldn't share anymore, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, no, that's not what it is. You gotta share your faith, but you gotta have your heart set on pilgrimage. This is what this is about. So going into 2024, as we share our dreams, we share our desires. We gotta ask ourselves: Is my heart set for pilgrimage, or is it set on my dream? Is it set? On pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is a is a path and a course that one takes. You know, there's a path that we all must take in 2024. The question is, is that the path on pilgrimage or the path for your dreams? Again, you think about you think about this. It, it, it teaches that I, I, well, part of the challenge, the part of the practical today, really is is to think about the, the areas in your life this year where you tank it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tanked it. Like you really tanked it. Okay. Like really, really tanked it. Like you messed up. Right. And you was down and out and there was nothing else. It was like, you know, you, you wanted to fall away and, and you felt like falling away and, and you maybe you did fall away and, and all these different things, you know, and, and you, you gotta you gotta write these things down. <laughs> the Bible teaches that this place is no longer a place of weakness. It's no no longer a place where you gotta you gotta live in a path. But this is a place where you gotta change. And you've got to con- you gotta you gotta redeploy it. You gotta take that place and you gotta change it around. You gotta right. be known for something different. Right. Right. You might be known for impurity in the year 2023. Come Those on. days are done. Yeah. You might be known for being bitter in the fellowship. Yeah. Those days are done. Yeah. You might be known for being lazy and being slothful and, and, not, and being selfish and all these different things and living a sinful life. Those days are done. Oh, 2024 right. is a Preach. time to repent and a time to move on. Yeah. It's a time to turn the back on. Again, the heart of the message is simple. Acts chapter 4. It's very, very simple. There's lots of dreams. I love to dream. There's nothing wrong with dreaming. But at the same time, as we dream, we've got to have the right focus. It's about God. It's about our worship with God. It starts with that. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 13... It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled and ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. The Bible is so cool. I 
I don't know how you guys read it. It's so cool. Yeah. When you when you when you figure out and you think about this this word for 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 um for courage, it actually means com- confidence. You know, and you, you look at the, the times used, yeah. and it's only it's, it's it appears thirty three times in the New Testament, and twenty one times is ascribed to, to Jesus. That you can only get confidence only through Jesus. You can only get courage through him. So you might say, man, I, I've, I've been, I've been, I really have been, I've been lacking in boldness this year. I've been lacking in courage. The Bible teaches that that's a relationship with God. Right. Again, enough of the days where we, where we tolerate and we're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, you, you, you're not, you're not courageous. No, it's sinful. Yeah. It's yeah. sinful not to be courageous. Yeah. It's sinful. Why? Because it reflects your relationship with God. Yeah. It reflects your relationship with God. So we got to change that narrative. No longer do we do we kind of like babysit, you know, timidity and the lack of courage. Come on, baby. Yeah. Come on, we we, we got to gotta drive that out of camp. Come on, yeah. And if you smell it or if you feel it, like just seeing it, and you, you you feel someone's eyes shaking as you as you look at them, you gotta you gotta drive that out. Yeah. It's yeah. done. Those things are done. Again, 2024, we're going into being bold. Simple, write down your place of backup. The place where you wept the most. That made you weep. Maybe it's your workplace. I don't know about you, st- like the workplace taught me a lot. Were, you know, I, I used to work in uh, Sainsbury's uh, with Gareth Factory. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, and it was, uh, and it was, uh, and it was, uh, it was character building for sure. It was character building. Um, this is over COVID and, um, and, so, so there was a there was a there was a time, there was a time uh, I, I probably had a well, I had a terrible fight. Let's just say that. I had a terrible fight this year. And I, I went into work and I was and my, my go-to emotion is anger. Is anger. And um and there was a colleague there and he didn't smell so um so awesome. It didn't no, make me angry. But what I did out of generosity was offering my lips. And he took offense to it. And he got angry. He was like, why are you again? I thought I was I thought this was the kingdom of God, you know, a brother smells a little bit, yeah. you know, just give him this and, and he, you know, it'll be good. And I thought it was the kingdom. I gave him I gave him deodorant and he got ticked. And guess what? He reported me to the manager. Oh, no way. He reports me to the manager. And uh, and, you know, and, and I, I get ticked, I lose it. I lost it. You know, I'm like uh, I'm like, what are you doing? You smell this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, how do you? And, and then the manager, the manager calls me in. He calls me into a separate room. And, uh, and now the manager, um, let's just say he, he's, uh, he's very religious. He believes in God and the Bible. Um, and he claims to be a priest. So he then sits me down and he says, uh, Demedia, I know, I know you're a believer, man. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not good. This feels like tea time. He's oh. like, I know you're a believing man, Um, uh, Do you think it was Christ-like? Oh. Oh. teaches that it says the scriptures foresaw and justified that the Gentiles by faith announced the gospel in advance to Abraham and all nations to be blessed through it. The same word for Gentiles is the same word for nations. And we understand a common theme within God's vision. 
is for all nations. Mm. Yeah. And and why 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 are you asking? Why must we bang on that it's for all nations? Because we don't have it yet. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I use the word yet because we're gonna get it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 But I, I believe that you can clap for that, David. Yeah. I believe that in order for us to get it, we've got to adopt God's vision. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 12. Come on, babe. Genesis 12. Again, if you want to know God's dream, you've got to be able to look Old and New Testament and see, see it. You understand in Matthew 28, Jesus says, All nations. Now in Genesis chapter 12, in verse 3, the Bible says, I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. All people in Hebrew is mispaha, which means nations. All nations will be blessed through you. Genesis chapter 18. So we understand for Abraham, God wanted to bless Abraham. He wanted to bless the nations through Abraham. Then we say Abraham literally had the choice whether or not to be selective in his nationality with, with, with nations to bless. But the Bible teaches that God is a God of all nations. Yeah. The same way we, we, we are to, to be blessings for other peoples, blessings for other nations. Yeah. Think about the nations we do not have here yet. Yeah. And you ask yourself, okay, uh, like what, what, what am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. In verse 18, the Bible here says, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. Genesis chapter 22. In Genesis 22, we see, we see the same thing again, if you guys don't believe me. Genesis 22, in verse 18. The Bible says here, it says, and through your offsprings, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed. First Timothy chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. So we understand God's vision, his dream was for all nations to be blessed. We gotta adopt God's dream. Going back to the beginning, we see here in verse four, we see it. God wants all men, nations, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, why did I share all these incredible scriptures with you guys? Is it because you guys are, are not able to understand that, you know, Matthew 28 is throughout the whole Bible? No, not quite. <coughs> Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 10, sorry. In Acts 10, we understand where the region has been at in regards to growth. We understand where the region has been at in regards to growth. We understand that in Acts Chapter 1, 100, we, the, the, the church starts with 120 disciples. And in Acts chapter 2, it goes from 120 to 3,120. And in Acts chapter 4, the Bible teaches that 5,000 men were baptized. And there was an increasing amount of growth, especially with daily additions being added to the kingdom daily. And later on, we find in Acts 8, Come on now. in Acts 8, we see that uh, we see that um, Stephen preaches the word, yeah. and he gets he gets killed. He gets he, he yeah. dies in Acts chapter seven, rather. And then we yeah. see in Acts chapter nine, we see Saul's conversion. But then we get to Acts chapter ten. We see the, the first Gentile conversion in Cornelius. We see in, in in chapter ten, we see that he gets converted. But then we see in verse in chapter eleven. I'm skipping over this for time's sake. In chapter eleven, in verse nineteen. We see in chapter 7, it says that Stephen gets crucified. Stephen dies and he gets martyred. Then everyone flees and the church scatters. But then we see what happened in verse 14 of chapter 11. Verse 19, rather. The Bible says, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and, and, and Antioch, telling the message only to who? But we understand that this wasn't God's plan. Yeah. We see that in Matthew 28, Jesus wanted it to be preached from to all nations. And in Acts chapter 10, you know, this was the very first opening for, for the Gentiles. 
But yet, these guys, they still didn't get it. They still began to have a very closed and community, right? They only preached it to the Jews. But we have some others in verse 20. It says, some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The Bible is so clear. It teaches that God's hand was with those that not only shared with the Jews, but also to the Gentiles as well. Yes. You see, when we have a fixed mindset, sharing with just one nation, God has God hand isn't with the nation, it's with the region. Come on now. If we're only if we only we, we look at time tree and we see Wait. only one nation, God hand isn't with the nation. There isn't gonna be this incredible amount of of, of additions and baptisms we want to see. Why? Because God isn't a racist God. Come on. Come on. He is a God of all nations. And we've got to be able to, we need to be able to adopt God's dream for our dream. So if that puts you in an uncomfortable state, that is perfect. Because finally you're beginning to dream. If you're like, I don't know how to convert a European guy, speak to Stellion. Speak to him. Learn how to. You know, there's incredible individuals within this room that you can speak to that can teach you how to convert convert these people. Yeah. You know, but again, it's not about having a community dream. It's about having a, a, an expanded dream, a dream that's, that's God's dream. So as we close tonight, let's, let's remember that Jesus himself, he sacrificed himself in order for all nations to be one. He sacrificed himself. And we understand that a dream is not, is not, is not worth dreaming if, if, if you cannot sacrifice. There's no point of it. It's not really a dream. So you've got to be able to sacrifice for something that you really love. And as we reflect on the cross, as we reflect on what Jesus did, again, he had one thing in mind. He had the dream of God. He had the, 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 the dream of the whole world to be evangelized in, in really his generation. He did it in, in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. But the same thing applies to us. As we focus in on the cross, let's remember why we're here. Yes. This isn't necessarily, we're not in church or playing church for religious purposes. Come on. Mm. You can go to the monk church or the Catholic church or whatever it is, you know. Like these, these are guys that, that want to play religion, but we're here because we understand that Jesus died for this. Yeah. He died for this. He died for each and every one of us. If you're studying the Bible to get restored, don't waste time. Mm. Tomorrow is not promised. It is not promised. If you're studying the Bible to become a disciple, there's nothing. There, there's nothing to lose. What are you? What are you? You're, you're gonna lose. You're, you're gonna lose your soul. Yeah. Wow. So again, as we focus in on the cross today, and as we go, we enter in 2024 in about 30 minutes. Wow. Wow. About 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, let's focus in on what God has done, and with the dreams that we have, the dreams that we're gonna come up with, let us understand that the, the focus really isn't just on you, but it's the fact that God wants a relationship with you, each and every single one of us. I love you as a God.